George Soros just made a speech from his Open Society Foundation. And amazingly, amazingly, whatever he has said is echoing what my friend Elmer Ewan has been saying on P Guru's channel for the several weeks now. In every one of the things that Soros touched upon, it is basically what Elmer has said before. I'm sure Soros did his own research before reading the speech. So this is an independent confirmation that what Elmer has been predicting that's going to happen in China is true. So Soros's 30 minute speech is extensive. He, he starts from the history of China. And, and before that, he even goes into what has been happening in the United States in the 1980s. In the 80s, United States was a sole superpower. By end of 80s, the USSR had completely crumbled. So there was a period where USSR was completely gone and Russia was emerging out of that rubble, you know, Yeltsin and so on and so forth. So US was the undisputed king. But then around 2013, she made his appearance, 2012 or 13, I don't remember exactly when. And things since then have been going at a frenetic pace from China. However, the points that Soros makes are very valid in that most of the growth that happened under Xi Jinping were due to the policies that were put in place by Deng Xiaoping and his successors. So after some time, these taps will run dry. And that is what is happening now. Now, let's go back to what is happening today in the United States and in China. For sure, now everybody agrees there are two superpowers. US and China. One is a democracy. The other one is a closed society. The other one is an open society, perhaps too open, one might say. But the point here is that both are using artificial intelligence. Artificial intelligence can be used for good or for bad. And it is Soros' contention that while the democratized countries like the fangs of the world, Facebook, Amazon, Apple, Netflix, and, and, and uh, Google, they are using it for the good, whereas Xi Jinping and, and China, the CCP, is using it for bad stuff, such as they are trying to profile everyone's DNA. In fact, the upcoming Olympics, there is an app that somebody has reverse engineered and has said that this app, which is mandatory for every participant in Olympics, keeps track of just about everything this athlete does while they go through their training processes before the actual event. Now, one can make the argument that with all this data, China could produce gold medal winning athletes. So easy, right? So these are some of the extensions of imagination where people are saying that, oh, if I have all these data, then I can recreate the genetic sequence of this particular athlete so that I will be able to have people winning the gold medal all the time. The, 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 the frightening thing here is China appears to be making changes that are directly impacting human DNA. And, and that can cause some very, very startling uh, consequences. So we have to see, wait and see how that uh, happens, whether how this is going to play out. Soros is not sure that Xi Jinping, who wants to be like Mao and Deng Xiaoping, that he wants to be on that level, whether he's going to succeed come October, because that's when his two term fil finish out, finishes. By the way, this two-term thing was put in place by Deng Xiaoping. And after him, Zhao Jiaming and then Wen Bao, uh, they, 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 they have, uh, they have uh, been only two two-terms each. And it was expected that Xi Jinping would also be two terms. I think it was Hu Jintao, not Wen Bao. Anyway, so you, you get the idea. Now, under Mao, they had the Great Leap Forward and then the Cultural Revolution. In Great Leap Forward, millions died. And in the Cultural Revolution, the cultural and economic elite died. So a lot of deaths under Mao. Then Deng Xiaoping came along. He realized quickly 
that China was far behind the West. And then he decided to become more capitalist. And that's where Xi Jinping came in. In 2013, when he took over the reins, China was almost a complete capitalist paradigm with a lot of engines roaring. And, and now he wants to do the opposite. He wants to go back the way Lenin and Mao were and, and move away from the Deng Xiaoping model. However, the CCP, many members are not really uh, towing his line. So there is a, there's a lot of friction going on here. And we have to wait and see how this comes out. But the most important thing, the most important thing is real estate used to be 35 to 40 percent of China's economy. And that is tottering right now. Evergrande is now into receivership. That is going to be a problem. More importantly, China's vaccine appears to be only working on the original Wuhan variants. On the Delta as well as Omicron, it seems powerless. So it's just a matter of time before China starts realizing that they are completely exposed to Omicron. By the way, many experts calculate that China's population today is not 1.4 billion, but it is more closer to 1.27 billion. In fact, Elmer says that it's even less than that. So all these things portend not good news for Xi Jinping. In the meantime, he will continue to posture about, aggressively strut, maybe make some uh, forays into India. But I think the end is near. That's what it appears to be. And that's what we have been predicting. So we have to wait and see how the cookie is going to crumble, but crumble it will. Thanks for watching. Do like, share, and subscribe to this channel. And I'm going to put in that link of Soros speech so that you can see what he's saying. It's a little bit longer than this particular summary, but I just wanted to tell you there are many doubting Thomases who will come and write that Elmer is this, Elmer is full of gas and this and that, but an independently verified speech from George Soros ought to convince you that Elmer is spot on. Namaskar. Thanks for watching.